Hey, look at you, you're back for the final session of Building Multilanguage Reports for Power BI in 2023. Part seven, implementing data translations for a calendar table. Now, we'll start by reviewing what we have to work with. Now, if we look at the current calendar table in the lab track, well, it's a standard calendar table. The one issue is that we have month and day and the issue is that a calculated table, it basically gets evaluated at data set load time. You know, so when it loads in the names of the months and days, they're only gonna be in one language, no matter what language users are speaking. Now, I'm gonna propose a solution for implementing data translations for month and day names. It's the same solution as used in the labs, and this solution is gonna be based on Power Query. Now with Power Query, there's a very powerful language called M. And what we're able to do is take, you know, one type of data and transform it into another type of data. Now in our example, there is a query which is languages. And when we run this, it produces the languages table. Now what's kind of interesting is that when you need to add a table to a data model in Power BI Desktop, you have an option. You know, you can either add the table with DAX or you can add it in Power Query with M code. And if you add it in Power Query with M code, you know, the query output is then available as input to other queries as we have here. So we're gonna write two different queries and they're gonna use the languages query output as their input. And what we're gonna be able to do is leverage another column that we've put inside of the languages table, which is default culture. You might have wondered why that was there. This is the reason. And the idea is that we can then write transforms that go row by row through the languages table and use the default culture to figure out, you know, how to translate the month name or the day name given a particular language. Okay, a little bit more detail. Let's kind of look at Power Query a little bit more depth. So month names are translated by passing default culture, you know, to the date dot month name function, which is part of M. So here's a simple example. If I call date month name and I pass a date and I either pass ENUS or I just omit the last parameter because ENUS is the default, you know, it's going to say January. However, if I pass ESES, now it's going to give me the month name, you know, translated into Spanish. Likewise, I can get the month name, you know, translated into French or German. Same thing with day name. So with day names, we're going to pass the default culture and we're going to use the date day of week name function. You know, so once again, if we have English, it's Monday. If I have Spanish, you know, or French or German, you know, it's something else. And the idea is that now we can, you know, use this to our advantage. Now the first query that we're going to look at and the table it creates are both named translated month names table. Might seem like a strange name, but we want to reserve the name translated month names for the field parameter we're going to create in just a little bit. Anyway, we're going to run this particular query and it's going to produce, you know, one column for every row in the languages table. And then it's going to use that default culture to figure out, you know, how to build the month name. Now let's take a quick look at the M code. That looks a little bit tough, uh, you know, but let's kind of call out the one thing here. Now, what's nice about this M code, as hard as it is to understand, is you don't need to understand it. You need to copy and paste it. And what's kind of neat is we tried very hard to kind of keep any type of column names out. So as you add and remove languages, you know, this doesn't have to ever be updated. Now, let's look at how we do, you know, the same thing for translated day names table. So, you know, with this particular query right here, it's going to, you know, basically perform the same operation, you know, but instead of having the month number having 12 rows, we have day number and we have seven rows. And then we have one column per language with the lookup tags. And once again, let's go ahead and look at this M code. Oh, just beautiful stuff. You kind of feel like you're at the Louvre looking at the Mona Lisa. Anyway, I digress. Uh, here is the, you know, one specific piece of M code, you know, where we pass uh, date 
day of week name, that little underscore, if you know M, you know, is how we are passing, you know, that default culture inside there. Okay, so at this point, you know, what we've been able to do is create two queries and when we run them, you know, we get two new tables in our data model. Now, first thing we're gonna to need to do is create some relationships. So the calendar table has day number, translated day names table has day number, we'll create a relationship based on that. Now we'll turn to the translated month names table and we'll create a relationship between calendar and the translated month names table on month number. And then finally, the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hide both of these tables from report view. You know, we don't ever need the user seeing these, we're gonna provide kind of an easier mechanism. You know, so now that you have kind of your translation tables in place, you know, what's the next step? Uh, next step is that we have to go to the translated day names table and configure sort by columns. You know, so when you show calendar days, you don't want, you know, the day name sorted alphabetically. You know, you want it sorted uh, chronologically. You know, so taking each of those columns and setting the sort by uh, column to day number is very important. And likewise, over in the translated month names table, we're gonna do the same thing and take all those columns with translations and set their sort by column to month number. Okay, now that we've done that, the translation tables are all ready. And so just like before, we're gonna create field parameters that sit on top of these. So we'll create a field parameter that for our report authors, they'll just be a pretty little month field that they can drop on their reports, yet behind the scenes, you know, we're gonna have the field parameter that does the column selection. You know, and same thing with the day. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to create two new field parameters. You know, you've already created two if you've done the lab, so this is just gonna be three and four, it should be pretty quick. So we'll create one field parameter, translated month names, you know, one name, translated day names. Since you've done this before, we can go pretty fast here. So once we've created translated month names, you know, the steps we're gonna go through is, you know, replace the DAX statement so that you have localized names of the fields for month. And then also we're gonna add that fourth column with a language identifier. You know, once we've done that, you know, we're gonna change the names. So now it's month, field, sort order, and language ID. Yeah, and the other thing that we're gonna do, you know, is we're gonna make sure we, ha we hide the language ID column. Now, we're gonna go through the same set of steps for translated day names. And the idea is we're gonna replace the DAX statement. You know, so now we have localized versions, you know, of the column name for day. And then we're gonna add the fourth column. Just like before, we're gonna update the column names. So now it's day, fields, sort order, and language ID, you know, and then finally, we're gonna hide the language ID from report view. And now that we've done that, we're gonna take these two new field parameters, you know, which are translated month name and translated day name, and we have to integrate them just like we did the other field parameters, you know, basically by taking the language ID column and creating a relationship. Now, once we have this in place, you know, now we've done our data modeling and we're ready to go back and address things in the report. You know, so as you do the lab, we're gonna have you go to that third page, you know, and the first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna take the column chart on the left and you're gonna get rid of month from the calendar table that wasn't translated and you're gonna replace it with the month field from the new translated month names field parameter. You know, likewise, you're gonna to go to the visual on the right, the other column chart, and you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna get rid of the day field from the calendar table that doesn't support translations, and now you're gonna add the day field from the translated day names field parameter. And then finally, we're gonna to go to the matrix, and there we have you know two things to fix. So the matrix you know needs the field parameter translated product names, you know, as well as the field parameter translated month names. And once we've got all that done, 
Well, we're all done. We save, we publish to the Power BI service, and finally, we have the end of the lab track and the end of this video series. Okay, so now let's look at Spanish. And, you know, we look at the two different column charts and we look at that matrix and we see the beauty of now the month names and day names are in Spanish. And then we test for French. And once again, I see that the whole page, you know, is displaying French translations and then finally German. So where are we? You know, we are now at the end. Look at all the things that you have learned. You come a long way. Remember the beginning where we talked about the three different types of translations? And so now you have a pretty good understanding of what's the difference between metadata translations and report label translations and data translations. And yet you know how to implement all three of them. We also exposed you to working with machine translations and hopefully you'll find you know, a usage for them and it really helps to speed things up. When we looked at report label translations, you know, we also went through uh, an overview of the strategy of the localized labels table. And so hopefully using that, you know, will help you to organize and work more efficiently. We've looked at exporting and importing and showed you ways to integrate, you know, with humans who are acting as translators who might not be technical, sending them files, getting them back, and being able to integrate their work you know, into your projects. And finally, we looked at data translations, something you don't always have to use, but when you do, you know, it's important to use a very uh, you know, efficient and scalable implementation as we looked at. So, that's it. You've now completed the whole seven video series. Thank you very much for watching. Check back with us at Power BI Dev Camp because we love telling you about these kind of things.